A revolutionary change was brought in the Arabian Peninsula by the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him. He established a fair society, respect for women, and created brotherhood amongst the various tribes in his very lifetime. He promoted education in numerous ways, changing the entire landscape of Arabian society. People who were previously looked down upon soon became leaders in all aspects of human life. The Holy Quran commanded Muslims to spread throughout the world and experience the vastness of God's creation. Within a few hundred years, a relatively short span of time, Muslims became the educators of the world. They became pioneers in medicine, physics, history, geology, and civil and military administration. During the centuries of European history, defined as medieval, the most advanced civilization in the world was undoubtedly Islam. In a time spanning close to a thousand years, an era known as Islam's golden age. The holy founder of Islam, peace be upon him, placed great emphasis on learning. His specific instruction was to seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. It is the quest for knowledge which opens the doors of progress where Muslim minds seek not only to prove their own genius, but to implement it for the service of their creator. Islam's rapid spread during the time of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and under the leadership of the rightly guided Khulafa, precipitated what is commonly referred to as the Golden Age of Islam, a period which ushered in immense contributions to philosophy, science, engineering and governance. The development of modern medicine, astronomy and mathematics, the refinement of algebra and trigonometry and the use of optics in a physical manner are all legacies from the Islamic era. Muslim scientists brought both knowledge and application into inventions which are still pertinent to modern life today. Small tools ranging from scissors all the way up to complex water-powered pumping machines and standardised weighing scales were all invented by Muslim scientists. Indeed, their legacy lives on, but it's not just through the machines themselves, but also the words, many of which are derived from Arabic origin. Words include algebra, algorithm, alchemy and camera are all derived from root Arabic origin. In the 8th century, Khalid the goat herder noticed his excitable animals had eaten red berries, which led to coffee production and the early alabric drink, al qahwa This surfaced in Europe at the first Venice coffee house in 1645, making it the world's favourite hot beverage today. In the 8th century, Jabir ibn Khayyan devised and perfected the distillation process using the alembic still, which is still used today. Muslims were producing rose water, essential oils and pure alcohol for medical use. Today, distillation has given us products ranging from plastics all the way to petrol. Early 13th century, al Jazari was the first person to use a crank which transmits rotary motion into linear motion. His machines were able to raise huge amounts of water without anyone lifting a finger. Muslims also pioneered use of alternative energy through windmills and the construction of dams and water reservoirs. The invincible designs of 12th century castles of Syria and Jerusalem were imitated in Western lands with key features like round towers, arrow slits, barbicans and battlements. Muslim architecture techniques of the 8th and 10th century, such as rib vaulting, the pointed and horseshoe arch, were the main inspiration on which Gothic architecture was based. These techniques enabled European architects to overcome problems in Romanesque vaulting and are prevalent in surviving Gothic architecture all across Europe today. More than a thousand years ago, in a darkened room known as Gamara in Arabic, Ibn al Khaytham observed light coming through a small hole in the window shutters, producing an upside down image on the opposite wall. 
This early pinhole camera has led to the camera we know today. In the 13th century, Ibn al-Khaldum traced the rise and fall of human societies in the science of civilization, recording it all in his famous book, al muqaddimah or Introduction to a History of the World, which forms the very basis of sociology and economic theory today. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, He who issues forth in search of knowledge is busy in the cause of Allah till he returns from his quest. In this hadith, travellers emphasised in relation to the seeking of knowledge, and the emphasis on movement intertwined with knowledge refers to the pilgrimage to Mecca. This emphasis on movement alongside knowledge seeking became a dominant cultural aspect of medieval Islam. Perhaps one of the most famous explorers of all time, Ibn Battuta travelled over 75,000 miles in 29 years' time through over 40 modern countries, compiling one of the best eyewitness accounts of the customs and practices of the medieval world. Muslims were also the first people to commonly hold the idea of a round earth. In the 11th century, Al-Idrisi was commissioned by the Norman king of Sicily to make a map. He produced an atlas of 70 maps called the Book of Roger, showing the earth was round. al Adrisi also made a globe out of silver to further stress the point. Maths, known as the language of nature, has been an integral part of Islamic science, as well as developing existing Greek concepts like trigonometry and giving us the numerals we use today. In the 8th century, al khwarizmi introduced the beginnings of algebra and it was developed into a form we still use today by many Muslims who followed him. Second World War problem solvers were carrying on the code-breaking tradition first written about by polymath al-Gindi from Baghdad when he described frequency analysis and laid the foundation of cryptology. Cutting-edge surgeon al-Zahrawi introduced over 200 surgical tools that revolutionised medical science more than 1,000 years ago. These tools look identical to modern-day 21st century tools used in various types of surgery. It was the gravitational pull of Khilafat that precipitated the rapid progress of Islam during its golden era. Once Khilafat on the precept of prophethood ended, the dominance of Islam soon began to fade. Today, the renaissance of Islam continues in the form of Khilafat and Ahmadiyyat, instituted after the demise of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam. As with the holy founder of the community, the Khulafa over the past 100 years have written numerous books embodying a massive amount of religious information. Under the divinely inspired leadership of Khilafat, therefore, the gravitational pull of unity is restored and the golden era of Islam is once more within sight.